Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Total Spot Fest time, and we have a great show for you. We're back to normal. It's AEW time. We get to go over the prophecy that being the elite may have foretold, and we got tons of great news all over the wrestling world. This is Total Spot Fest. What down they vote? <laughs> Enjoy the total spot fest. Welcome Join to oh, <laughs> welcome to or welcome back to Total Spot Fest. Those of you not watching us on YouTube, we're me and Jamie rocking out in our dark order here. So, yes, <laughs> uh, finally got those shirts that you got that, that we got that, uh, that 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 gift card for from uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. So, yeah, you know, yes. yes, Jamie Jamie wanted us to look alike, so that's what we're doing. We're looking alike, but hey, it's dark order, so it's fitting. But Thank you for joining us. This is Total Spot Fest on our regularly scheduled AEW Dynamite review. Oh, it feels good to be back to normal. It feels so oh, good. So good. They're going, so good. They're, they're going touring next week. Every it, it, Normalcy has returned in a, at least a little bit to the wrestling world. So uh, we do appreciate you uh, giving us a, a look or giving us a listen. Uh, if you're on YouTube, as always, you can join the conversation by hitting a comment down below. Like, subscribe, all the things. It does help us out quite a bit. And if you want to holler at us, we are at, at Total Spot Fest on Twitter. Our personal Twitters are listed down below if you want to do that as well. But we're going to get right to it. So we're yeah. going to talk about AW in a little bit here. But uh, I heard you had a couple things that you wanted to talk about news-wise, right? Yeah, of course. Let's just, let's just get into our, our good friends at Journey Pro. Got to start with Journey Pro because, so, god damn, we love Journey Pro. So they did announce two more matches. Um, we have oh, make me happy. a couple of our friends, Thumbs and Buns, the tag team, <laughs> oh, versus the Premier. Uh, we don't know anything about the Premier, don't care, but we got Thumbs and Buns. We've talked about them before. Uh, actually, Nick was the one, uh, Nicholas, our young boy, if you remember him. Mm -hmm. He loved the guy with the giant thumb. Yeah, and, Micah. of course, Micah. yeah, Micah. And I'm, I'm more of the Buns guy because he had the match at, at one point at somebody I did like in Joey Styles, and it was touch his ass, touch his dick. It was kind of funny. It was but it was then, funny. Then you find out that Joey Styles is, in fact, a complete sleazeball and piece of shit, so we don't like him anymore. Joey Ryan. Joey, Joey. Ryan. Sorry, yeah, Joey yeah. Styles. Joey Styles is an amalgamation of him and AJ Styles, and please don't do that to AJ. <laughs> yeah, AJ deserves better. Yeah, but he also did, they did the Journey Pro versus Zello Pro. Well, it's a Chicago promotion, those of you not mm -hmm. familiar. Go check them out. They're fantastic, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, they did a crossover. It was uh, in November of 19. Uh, is the when they did that, and they did a ten-person tag. It's the one where Kylie Ray made a surprise appearance. Yeah, they uh, were trying to get her to be on 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 the. Oh uh, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, because you know, like, yeah, like, like, but but at the at the beginning, everybody's kind of like fighting over that Kylie Ray, which like, I guess we have all ten of them in the ring, and it just kind of like everybody just just causing a, a muck in a you know a, a ruckus going on, and and he buns the steel just jumps up in the air, lands butt first, and everybody explodes out of the ring because of his. Butt. But it was fantastic. Yeah, I love it, me some buns of steel. It's he, uh, the guy's like a buck sixty at best. Buck at, sixty, but 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 it's solid. hilarious. Built like a brick shit house. Yeah. Nicest guy too. I've met him a couple great guy. times, man. Yeah. Great guy. Great dude, but I just it's it's so funny because it's this little dude does a butt bomb and everybody just explodes <laughs> up. But anyway, he's thumb thumbs a bun we going against that. the premiere. And then, oh, and then they oh. did announce Woo. a good one, another good one. Anaya, who used to be a part of the Howlets when it was yes. NWL, he's going against none other than fucking Gary, Gary J. Gary. Gary fucking J. Gary fucking J. You're goddamn right. The stiff Robo Ginger. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's not Journey Pro if you don't have Jeremy Wyatt. And it's not Journey Pro if you don't have Gary fucking J. I got to hear. And Hoodie Howlett. And, and, and Hoodie Howlett. There's Hallett, one but. missing. Actually, two missing, and I hope the, they the face besties, each other. The besties. Well, the sure. besties. Well, I'm talking about the women's division because they've yet to do a women's match, and so far, every time we've been there, Lainey Luck's been there, and Marty Bell's been there. Well, and Lainey's moved more to Chicago, though, so she's been wrestling at a Zello Pro and stuff like that. So, Well, she's she's always been Zello. She was the Zello champion. She just recently lost it. I, like I know, but I, just, I, say, I, say, I don't know what... I don't know... I, don't, I honestly 
have not looked at anything else around that time other than what's going on in St. Louis the week before. So yeah. I don't know if there's anything competing with it um, regionally or – so. I really hope not because I really, really want to see them. Yeah. And I want to hear her uh, terrible, <laughs> amazing entrance song that I have <laughs> on my Amazon playlist just because it's, it just gets me hyped every time. So I got to give her some props. I'm, I'm so amped to hear because, like I said, the, the, the two main ones that I like to see, every, and I love all of them. I mean, I, I, I'd love to see Dak Draper return. You know, Dak Draper oh. was a staple. Uh, he's he's actually making really good waves in Ring of Honor and power to him. I've been a big Dak Draper fan since day one. I've always Same. liked him. Um, you know, and and you know, but there's other ones. I lo- love me the Howlets. I love the Besties, but the two ones for me are always Jeremy Wise. I hear Rainbow in the Dark, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. and then of course Gary fucking J is my shit. Love me some Gary J. And, you know, I hear, hear uh, Joker Wolf Thief and the Thief. Yeah, Joker yeah, Thief and the Joker night, and yeah. the Thief. It's Joker and the Thief, yeah. Barrier, and and, and we, there's a whole thing you do. You got to get up to the ring, clap and slap, and you do. Oh, just, I can't I'm wait. For, I cannot I wait ready. for our lucky contestants who, who get to go with us and, and see this. So, <laughs> also, remember, folks. We have a contest out there for two tickets to go see Journey Pro with us. So you have to like our previous show, episode 42. You have to like, make sure you like and subscribe to us, or episode 43, I apologize. Uh, you have to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and comment what you think the greatest promo of all time is. We've had some really great um, mm-hmm. re- promos on there. Somebody obviously listens to the show because they automatically went to 1,004 holds. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, but they, they went straight wrong. to it. And then, you know, there's a couple other ones on there that were good. Some good ones. The one I didn't even think of, you know, the Eddie Guerrero promo. I was like, God, Eddie Guerrero, his pro Yeah, so yeah. there's, yeah, plenty of time. We're doing this through the 11th. So as long as you're in by midnight on the 11th, 11th turning into the 12th of July. So that's Sunday, you know, uh, a week from 4th of July, basically, you have until. Go back. It's all comment on that video. So like and comment. On, like this one, too, if you want. But like and comment a- on the episode 43, the last video. We'll put a link down in the description, too, for, the, for that. So just to make it easy, you know, so you can go from here to there super fast um, and subscribe. It's two. It's free. Free tickets to a wrestling show here in Kansas City, plus a, a, a round of drinks of your choosing, alcoholic or not. If you want to get a seven-shot espresso drink, this is a coffee roaster place. That counts. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm, I might bitch, but I'll still buy it. <laughs> yeah, I'd bitch for sure. I mean, yeah, I'll take a twenty-dollar coffee. Okay, well, yeah. you gotta sleep. You gotta try and sleep tonight, so whatever, you know. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, open till eleven. Still out there. Go do it. Yes. All right. In other news, and this one I did not know, uh, but uh, Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay, also known mm-hmm. as Peyton Royce and. Um, I've lost her name already. Um, Billy, Billy, Billy K. Kay, sorry. Um, the inspiration, I guess that's their new name. They still don't have their green cards in the United States. They still don't. They've been working on it for two years. Oh wow! Really and COVID hit. And it just really like messed it all up. They can still I, live yeah, here. I can see that. They can still do that, but they're hoping to get it resolved in the next six to twelve months. So they can't work for anybody. And WWE is doing absolutely nothing to help them, too. That sounds about right. You know, Chelsea Green, same thing going on there. Like, like she was going to, she's, she told, um, her, uh, Matt Cardona, her fiance, is like, we might need to get married next weekend because that, you know, that might just be easier, you know, <laughs> like a yeah. few weeks back, you know. And, you know, you think about it because I don't know who Billy Kay, Billy, uh, Billy McKay. Je- Jessica McKay. Jessica, Jessica McKay. McKay. Oh God, it's just so hard to try to keep names yeah. straight. Uh, but but her, Jesse. Um, I don't know who she's married to. She had recently revealed on one of their first episodes of their podcast that she's married, and it was like, what? Really? You know, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't know who she's married to. But um, Cassie Lee is married to Sean Spears. Sean Spears is, of course, a Canadian, so that doesn't help. Yeah, it does not help. <laughs> you know. So oh, God, that sucks, man. Because I mean, I would have loved to see them in. Because they were part of the first round of releases, they're 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 available ninety days running up soon, right? Yeah, it, next month. 
I was going to say, I thought July sometime. Yeah. I thought like maybe July. by Slammiversary even they could have showed up because that would have been awesome. <sighs> yeah, so good luck to them. I think that just sucks that these, they're still fighting green cards issues. <sighs> Red tape. Oh, what's interesting, too, because I did read a thing. And I, I don't I don't have the link in front of me. I don't I don't remember the specifics, so don't 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 murder me if I'm wrong, Internet. But uh, apparently, yeah, like like that's gonna happen. Yeah. Apparently, WWE is open to talking with and supposedly going to r- release the no- non competes of some or uh, some or a number of the released wrestlers before ninety days. Oh. That's, all the insight that was given to it, there wasn't any more specifics. They didn't say it was a person, every person, or somewhere in between. So kind of like what they did with Andrade? I'm thinking something of that nature, you know? Okay. I think that depending on – I think I here's what here's my, here's my take on it. Because like I said, I don't have it in front of me, but it was very sparse on details. But my take on it is just with the way that they've been with this and – Good, bad, or indifferent. One thing Nick Khan has done that you can look at as a positive, like we talked about last time, is they're at least not doing this horde wrestler game, right? He at least is getting to the point, and it's like, okay, we got too many people. We got to get rid of some of them, let them go, let them go somewhere else. And for some people, um, you know, Tommy and Ruby Soho. Hey, Ruby. Um, You know, a few others. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, it, it's going to be a good thing for them, uh, you know, overall, you know, and, you know, the, you know, so I don't, I don't know. I, I think that that's a, that's, I think that's a very mature thing for them to be too, you know, they're independent contractors and you release them, let them, let them get back to work a little sooner. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so moving yeah. on swiftly, WWE's name police or the naming people thing is back at it again. Our good friend, the last remaining sanity member, Nikki Cross, is no longer Nikki Cross. <laughs> yeah. S- she's Nikki Ash, almost a superhero. And the reason they've went this way is because the rumors are swirling that Karrion Cross is going to come up and they can't have two crosses. Dumb. It's so dumb. I mean, look at AEW. I, I, I made the joke that I, I quoted somebody from Twitter last time about, you know, you know, Brian Cage versus Christian Cage versus Adam Page. Yeah, it's the same last name. It's a little di- Who cares? People have like, the seriously. same last name. Like, it's simple. It, it, it people, they're, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a million mics in the world, you know? It's like, same, yeah. I, th- I think we know that they're not the same person. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, but... Whatever yeah. WWE is it's, it's Nikki A A S. In case you're wondering, Cap- people, it's a ca- it's an acronym: capital A period, capital A period, capital S period. It's so bad, it's comical. Yeah, it's it's bad. Um, <laughs> we we are are we we're not reviewing NXT, right? Or are we? We're gonna go through NXT real quick. Yes. Okay, because the other piece of news I have is related to that, so we okay, can just hold put on. Pin hold on there. to that. Yeah, hold on to that. We'll go through NXT in just a few minutes here. We're just gonna go through it real quick, guys, because uh, there was some cool stuff that happened there. Um, one thing I do want to say, a couple bits that I had. So WWE news that I had was that somebody just apparently up and got married yesterday. So. <laughs> Or two days ago, I should say. Two days ago. Yeah, Seth Rollins and Becky Rollins tweeted out a picture saying, hey, apparently it seems like we're finally going to go get married. Like, right now. (laughs) It's like, oh, okay. So, good on them. Yeah, so they're officially married. That's good for them. You know, I like to see see wrestlers get together, stay together, be happy. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, Another thing here, uh, impact related. So, it was a story that I read yesterday that impact has announced they're going to hold two tv tapings following slam reversal yes usually what they do if you didn't if you didn't know impact tapes their shows they don't do live shows for their weeklies so they tape them generally in like bunches so they'll tape like two or three in a row right um starting after slam anniversary they're gonna have a limited number of tickets available for real life human being fans to be there so i'm excited that's the last one that's you know of the of the weekly uh, you you know bigger that's the last one that still needed fans so yes Good. yes 
especially post Slam anniversary, because you're going to have somebody from the you know the WWE you know Fallout on Slam anniversary. Somebody, mm -hmm. somebody's always there. Um, so good for them. Good for the people there in Slam or Impact. That's great. Yes, and uh, it's kind of uh, similarly related to Impact Wrestling. A former Impact or TNA wrestling star recently signed with AEW. I don't know if you read this or not. But one Mr. Sanjay Dutt has reportedly signed with AEW. Oh, I did not see that. I knew he left WWE just yes. under weird. No one knows why he just left on his own he accord. Just left, right? But and for and, and and for those of you who are like, I remember him. Like he doesn't wrestle anymore. He's a back. He's a backstage guy now. But uh, he retired. Uh, Bruce. 17 18 ish he had uh he, he had a bunch of injuries that just kept nagging on so yeah but um but yeah he is uh been a producer uh for a for wwe for like a hot minute i and i literally mean that as literally as possible when i say a hot minute but yeah he recently signed with the backstage a uh, similar type of role for AEW, which i think is great i think it's good because all the guys they have there that they're putting back there I like that they're former wrestlers too, and not former wrestlers from thirty years ago. You know, yeah. So, I think that's good for the product moving forward as they grow. They have multiple shows, and just like we talked about with them bringing in, you know, Mark Henry and uh, you know Matt Hardy and Christian Cage and this and that. You know, these guys are there to help these young talent grow, which we're going to talk about ad nauseum. Spoiler. Uh, with tonight's with last night's dynamite, but yeah, so Sanjay Dutt going to AEW, so and he was a guy who did flippy spitty shit, uh, and that he did plays into what they do very well. He was and his his set of matches they did basically a modern day um, um, Miss Elizabeth Macho Man Jake the Snake role with uh, Sanjay Dutt playing the Jake the Snake pocket of it there's black machismo jay lethal yeah socal val as the miss as the miss you know miss uh, Elizabeth. i remember that guy it was a very that. well done i mean is i mean first of all the character works what endowed me to uh uh, uh jay lethal but sanjay dutt was great in it and the ma series of matches that him and lethal had unbelievable so good mm -hmm. so good go up on youtube watch them on impacts youtube they're fantastic so um Let's talk about NXT. Yeah. So Tuesday night was NXT, and we've been we've been hitting it a while that NXT is going like this past little bit here. Kind of like I don't know. This, ever since they moved to Tuesday, even before that, you know, they've been doing this kind of shift. You, you know, there's always these. I don't want to call them seasons or generations of NXT, but it kind of feels like that, you know, because you had like the Rollins era, right? You had all that, you know, Rollins and, you know, and then they moved on Cesaro and they all moved on. And you had like, you know, the, the Finn Balor, Nakamura, and that led into like kind of Joe. And then after that you had, you know, Drew McIntyre and Andrade and, you know, and Aleister Black. And then you had Undisputed Era with Gargano and, Champa and all, so it feels like they're kind of moving into that next generation. You know, they felt like that for a little. I agree. Bit. And Tuesday's show really signified a lot of that to me personally. Oh, a hundred percent. So, uh, especially the way it ended, but the way it started was probably my favorite because they started with I'm going to call it right now, straight up banger, the triple threat number one contenders tag team match for the women, Shotzi Moon or Shotzi Moon. <laughs> yeah, that's a good name for him. That's a good one. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart versus Io, Shira Io Shirai and Zoe Stark versus Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. And once again, number one contender, whoever won this gets a title shot next week at uh, Great American Bash. Uh, by the way, it's no longer a welcome to the ball pit for Shotzi. It's welcome to the fire pit. Okay. I I don't know. It's just changing to the... She's I, got whatever. green hair. Like fire does not suit her in any way, shape, or form. I mean, but I, I think I, I guarantee you, producers are like, we don't get ball pit. I'm like, well, that's kind of the fucking point, <laughs> you know. But anyway, anyway, I digress because this match was 
Balls to the wall right from the start. They started the show off with it, too. There's none of this fluff and crap. You know, start the show off with this match, and they just went mm-hmm. to town. These six women just had a spot fest. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it was a triple threat. So there's two types of, you know, tag team, multiple, more than two team matches. They, they do. It's either the, uh, it's a three-way or a four-way, right? You know, where you have two people in the mm-hmm. ring at a time, and they could tag anybody. That's usually what happens on Raw and SmackDown. This was an actual triple threat. So you had one member from each team in the ring. You could only tag your own tag member, but you had three people. In the, and it just was so, it's so much better to do it this way because action was all over the place. People kept, they kept ganging up on Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, you know, as much as we talk about her not being over from uh, TakeOver, which is valid. She serves the role as the, you know, the dominating big bruiser really well when mm-hmm. called upon for that. And that's better for her. That's not the to- that's not top dog status, but that's great role for her. Just saying. EO looked fantastic. Zoe looked great. Shotzi and and Ember didn't have the botches <laughs> in this match, so that's always a plus. <laughs> yes. You know. But we got all all the moves, all the stuff. Uh it ended up with Io Shirai getting the pinfall on Dakota Kai, which gives me another uh, thought about uh, how they're going to get the belt off of uh, Raquel. She's I think she'll turn on I'm amending my previous proclamation. I think that the Raquel will turn on Dakota as being the weak link, which will make her face. She'll get ah, the title that makes back. Sense. Then she'll like go up the mountain, probably face her two or three times, but get the title, finally get a title, and then get jumped by Tegan Knox. That's my new prediction. So, Well, uh, I think Tegan Knox is the power thing still. Probably. It's 61% now, I think, isn't that what it is now? Something like that, yeah. Well, um, who knows? But anyway, uh, so Eo Eo and Zoe won. They have a title shot next week against the Way. Yep. Uh, You you had several promos. Then you had Karrion Cross promo, um, where he's kind of walking into the ring, and you know he got jumped by Johnny Gargano earlier in the day. So he calls out Johnny Gargano. They're setting up for him and Johnny Gargano by far, right? That kind of kept going on throughout the night, right? Yep. Um, and then uh, there was a Joe uh, at one point in time. You know, Joe came out with all of his security guards, and there was a, there was a Joe and, and Karrion Cross stare down. Uh, so obligatory almost at this point, but it's nice. You had uh, a, a, the battery promos are getting really fucking annoying because I cannot figure it out. I cannot figure it out for the life of me. Usually, I can get at least some inclination or have a guess. I have no idea. It's just literally a battery with the percentage going up. Tegan Knox. I, I guess. I guess you keep saying that, and I guess that's it. I don't know though. I, I, it could be. It could be fucking anybody. Um, fair, fair. Uh, you, had a, you had a couple different squash matches. Then Roderick Strong looked really good against Asher Hale. Beat him by submission too. Oh. I like that. Yeah, because yeah. you don't see Roddy doing. He has this weird. It's kind of like a a double double back wing kind of like like reverse choke. Okay. And then he turned it into like a half, a half that with an arm bar. It was good looking, but it was, like I said, it's different. Roddy looks great. He's not going to really talk in his whole faction, which I dig. It's definitely Malcolm Bivens be in the mouth. I don't know what uh, uh, you, you know, the, the big, uh, 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 the Japanese uh, guy, I can't remember his name. Um, Hide- right. Hideki? Uh, yeah, oh Hide- Hideki. We're gonna call him Hideki, yes, because I don't. Yeah, last name. Ah. Is, it's gonna drive Jamie crazy for five minutes, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, I don't, I don't know what his role is gonna be. They actually mentioned him and talked about how he's like more of a trainer or whatever. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. Uh, then you had Cameron Grimes come out and he squashed uh, Ari Sterling. He didn't. It wasn't a total squash. It actually was a pretty good match. And then out comes LA Knight afterwards, right? So this is the part that you're really gonna like, Jamie. Uh, so LA Knight comes out and it's just, just jawing at Cameron, right? And so Cameron tells him to come in the ring, this and that, and then he challenges him for to for the million dollar title next week at uh, uh, Great American Bash. Mm-hmm. LA Knight, of course, declines. <laughs> 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 and, and and boy, I mean, when they get to a full crowd, <laughs> it's going to be interesting because he is so heel, and they yes, and the crowd eats him up as a heel. It's great. Yes, I I love me some L.A. Knight. You are all on it. Well, here's the part you're really going to like. So L.A. Knight then starts talking more, and he reconsiders. He said, 
he will take that match. He will put the title on the line. But if he wins, Cameron has to become his butler. So, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a limb, and I'm gonna say that he's gonna, he's gonna retain because I think, I don't, I don't think, I think that. If they if they drop the belt off him to Cameron, which will happen, and you will buy a shirt and wear it, uh, I think it'll be at a takeover. I think they want to get that bigger pop for it. So anyway, that's my guess. I would agree. I feel like if that was the case, Cameron Grimes soon. would yeah. win there. I totally yeah, agree this, with that statement because he just won this a couple weeks ago. It's too soon to take the belt off of him. I feel, you know, and give it to Cameron. I think you want to let the story play out. This is a great way to play that story out. Go with this for about three, three, four weeks of him just being, you know, abused by L.A. Knight, and the promos are going to be great. Oh my god, be so good! They're uh, going to be amazing. But the betting is, betting odds actually have Cameron Grimes as the favorite. Well, I would go against that. I'm not a betting person, though. So eh, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, um, then you had. Uh, yeah, you, you had more promos than kind of keep keeping on there. You know, you had EO. E, 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 uh, it was uh, e, Candice and, and E and D were getting talked to, and then EO and uh, you know uh, Zoe come in the frame, and that led to a great little moment between Candice and EO, which uh, she's gonna tell us like, no matter what happens, you better just keep your eye on this woman. She's not too good at uh, maintaining friendships. It, Candace says. Uh, and there's, I mean, the, yeah, Candace and EO, I could see all. all that's like. That's like giving me Colin Gargano. Yes, give me more of this all the time. Absolutely. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly promo answered by jo- answered by Adam Cole. You know, Samoa Joe comes out to you know you know keep the keep the keep the peace right, and then at the end of it, it ends with uh, them you know starting to go at each other, and then uh, Kyle O'Reilly puts Cole in a in a leg bar, and and, and Cole's like, Joe, come on, do something, and Joe just looks at him. And it turns around and walks out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and and it was and it, and there's been more trickles coming in about Joe. He is going to be back wrestling. He will be wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, he will be in there eventually. But is he's also is interesting too. I don't know if you knew this, but apparently um, Triple H called him like hours after he was released. Oh, like. I- did not know that. Like, he got released, and what had happened was, so he was like, kind of, you know, like, talking to a few people, sending off some, hey, because he said, hey, I've been there before. He said, on an interview, he was talking about this. He's like, I've been, hey, I've been there before. If it was younger me, I probably would have said some stupid shit, but I've been there before. It's okay. It happens. You know, it's a business. I'm good. Whatever, you know. So he was like, he was like sending off some, like, you know, thank you texts and emails and stuff to people and, you know, being cordial, you know, saying, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for working with me. I appreciate this. And in the middle of that, he got a text from, from Triple H that says, I'm in a meeting now. Don't do anything. I'm going to call you in two hours. And so apparently he called him like right away. I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to figure this out. We're going to fix this. You're coming. To- yeah. So anyway, uh, but part of him coming back to NXT is that he's doing more. Not just kayfabe, but he's doing more stuff behind the scenes about with the production and it's kind of you know kind of getting into that Triple H esque role a little bit more about the business side of it. So because he's got tons of connections all over the wrestling world, Joe does. He's yeah. super well connected, so he's a great guy to have in your back office. So anyway, that's cool. But he will he will wrestle. That is for sure. And uh, um, it's Hideki Suzuki. Hideki Suzuki. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, because I was just, I could not remember his name. I'm terrible with names anyway. <laughs> but, um, and then you had Jake Atlas versus Mercedes Martinez versus Zia Lee and Boa, um, which was a yeah. surprisingly good match, a lot better than I thought. It ended with a complete, like, oh my God moment because Zia Lee did her spinning back kick like the, the Black Mass and straight up, no fake, just knocked, just knocked out Mercedes Cole. Just knocked her out. Dead on her feet. Cold. Like, I was expecting, um, oh. not, not Chris Rock, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Tucker Friday, Chris Tucker just run Tucker. out. You got yeah. knocked the fuck, the fuck out. out. Like, I was expecting that moment because, <laughs> like, she did. She, she timbered. Like, she legit just timbered. And the thing is, too, like, I've said this before, Zia Lee is probably the best striker in all of wrestling, women's wrestling. Like, her strikes look so amazing. Like she had that stiff, 
super stiff looking uh, super kick. Like, uh huh. It looked like that one connected, and then this one definitely connected. It's like, damn. Well, yeah. And, Cause, and at the whew. at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, when uh, everything was up in the air, nobody nobody was working, nobody, we didn't know what was going on. You know, she was starting to train to be for MMA, and you know, and they're like, well, you can't you can't do other things. She goes, well, I'm not the main roster talent. I can do other stuff if I want. Apparently, that actually caused some friction, but she kept training for that. That's why, you know, people say when they came, she came back with this whole angle. Oh, she's she's more cut now, and she was because she was training to be an MMA stuff. So that's why a lot of her new stuff is very much focused on the striking a lot more than it was before because that was. That's really what her training has been for the past couple of years, and good God, she's good at it. <laughs> I oh, mean, I'm a Zia Lee fan. Just period. I, she's, I'm she's in got on me. it. I, I still don't like the whole Tian Shaw thing. Is it a person? Is it is it an entity? Is it is it a whatever? I don't know, but I, I like don't her. Care. Yeah, this is exactly. I, like like, her. I don't care about that. I like I like what she's doing in the ring right now. Like she I is. Do just like her? Amazing right now. You had a few more promos setting up things. MSK has sat down with Chomp and Thatcher. Sure, great, whatever. You had uh, more battery stuff. I think at the end, by the last one, it was, dude, dude there's three eighty-one percent So great next American week, hopefully, bash, yeah. I hope, well, hope to God we're going to find out what this is. If it's Tegan Knox, great. If it's anybody, I just, I just, I want to know. This is, like, I can usually figure stuff out. This is, reminds me of Jericho and the whole countdown thing. I could not I could not figure that out, you know. I could not figure that one out. But I can usually get at least a, an inclination. Sometimes I'm wrong, but I'm I'm in the same ballpark, but this yeah. no idea. Well, it ended with and there's a couple other stuff, you know, Karen Cross, Gargano, they fought a few more times, a few things happened. But then you got to the main event, which was made earlier on in the night. It's Bronson Reed going up against Isaiah Swerve Scott for the U for the North American title. Okay? Great match. It was a it was an excellent excellent match. Mm-hmm. I've long said I appreciate Swerve as the wrestler. He just needed something to do other than being a guy that wrestles, right? Well, Hit Bow, which I still hate the logo. I should know. I love the logo. I hate the typography. It, it drives me crazy. I don't know. As this is like the old like you know. Um, you know, copy editor in me from my high school journalism class. I look at that and I'm like, a typeface is facing the wrong way. It's, it's, it, it, oh, it drives me crazy. But, uh, but this, this this group is great, in, and they are they are consistent. They are all very unique in their in their shtick within the group. It's a great fit for all of them. Yeah, it's a great fit for NXT. It's great stuff. Other than that freaking R, but. It gives him. It gives him finally something rather than just being a guy that has good matches, you know. And Bronson Reed is one of the ones like Karrion Cross who's been doing dark matches for WWE main event, right? You know. So there's big talk about him going up. So everyone's like, "Well, what does this mean?" Well, it was a fantastic match, and it ended with uh, there was attempted interference by Hit Row. Got out of the way. Got out of the way. He's going back into the ring. Bronson is right. And as he's going in there, Swerve comes over and does his step up jump, like like lunge kick to the back of the head, while he's like on the bottom rope as he's as he's like entering the ring, and then he goes up to the top rope, does a four fifty on him while he's still dangling on the rope. Yeah, that's pulls awesome. him over. One two three, new <coughs> North American champ. What Swerve? So yeah, no, I was I was amazed. I did not see that because Bronson just got the belt, but all and- these rumors. All these rumors. I mean, um, he's, it's going to be bad for him career-wise. He's going to get buried like a son of a bitch. Look, look, make him thick boy again. Make him thick. I guarantee what will happen. He'll get paired. Oh, God. This is going to be so dumb. They're going to pair him with Otis. Oh. And Which then, and they, he's they had a Bronson perfectly Reed they, anymore. He's just going to be Bronson because right, Bronson evidently they don't like last names. And, and they might just call them heavy machinery again, which is just the stupidest I, that knowing knowing Bruce and Vince, that, that's probably what'll happen, right? You know, who knows? Which, I hope not. I hope to God not. Have but. you seen the latest interview with Otis? Like he's dropped his. Oh yeah. Well, that's the way that, he talks. That, that, well he that he learned from the Alpha Academy, you know, for yeah. the academy. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's and he cut and his hair. He, like he's even cut his hair shaved. up top too. I, I know. Shaved. He shaved. The he shaved looks shaved terrible. Got me. He looks terrible without a beard. I am sorry. He does. From one fat guy to another, bro, <laughs> grow your beard keep, back. Keep the facial hair. Some guys can pull it off. Some guys can't. And Jamie, I okay. 
and you guys might be saying, yeah, sure, but have you ever done other? It was like, Jamie's tried to grow a beard. He's, he can't get it in all the places, right? It's splotchy. Splotchy, plus his wife goes, eh, eh, no. Yeah, um, and, and my wife and I have almost been married 20 years, so it's a happy <laughs> wife, happy life. Yes. So yes, no beard yes, on the Jamie. And I have gone all the way. I've had facial hair ever since I was back in high school, which is over 20 years ago. Um, when the Blues won the Stanley Cup, though, I did sign up. I did the whole beard challenge. I raised money for the Blues charity, right? And at the, at the end... I did shave all the way down for the first time since I was a sophomore in high school. Over 20 years, right? And I looked bad. Oh, I looked it like, was. <laughs> I looked like Otis. And so, Otis, there are people. I'm one of them. Grow that facial hair back out. Just grow it out. Grow it out. They're not going to fire you. I'll put it this way. It just looks really, really uncomfortable. Like, From experience, you, I can tell you it is. Like, you like, you I, looked I, naked. You yeah. looked naked. It was it was in July. It was in the dead, dead of summer when I did it, and my face was freezing for like three days because it's yeah. like it's so weird. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with Bronson. Hopefully not. Hopefully I'm just you know projecting or whatever. And he, he but more than likely, I mean, you drop the title. He's it. All the signs are for him to go up. Which I mean, good for him. You know, and hopefully something good comes out of it. Once again. Apparently, WWE is saving good stuff for when they go back on the road. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully. 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 Well, that was, imp- that was Impact. That was not Impact. That was <laughs> that NXT. Was <laughs> that was NXT. definitely not Impact. Um, let's, uh, so, so, last night was, like I said, regular scheduled Dynamite. So yes, Jamie, yes, it was. Let's talk about the final asterisk, the final uh, 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 Dynamite at... Daly's place before they hit the road again until August fifteenth. Um, but <laughs> yeah, there's the asterisk. They're going to have one yeah. more show. They're finally leaving. This is their last show, like since they've been there basically since the pandemic at Daly's place. And I have to say, it was a great send off. I really, 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 really enjoyed this show, top to bottom, left to right. It was a really good show. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, opens up with a match, not a promo. Actually, sorry, it opens up with Chris Jericho coming to do commentary, and <laughs> the crowd went ape shit. Like, the crowd was hot. Like it, Right. Th- it again, wasn't a full Daily's place, but they had the full stage, and they had the full lower level full. Yes. So, that's it good. Was, it was good. Yeah, I mean, but they were still loud and, and proud, for sure. Um, so anyway, first match of the night is Eddie Kingston and Pentagon Jr. or Penta El Zero Miedo. Uh, and he was again, once again, in his Joker garb. It was amazing. Joker Penta, so great. Then the Young Bucks come out with their their young boy, Brandon Cutler. But the thing <laughs> is with them, they shaved-ish. They shaved in weird ways. Let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah, so, and boy, did commentary like calling it out. <laughs> oh my god. Well, they were not the only ones. Like, I feel like right now in AEW, if you watch AEW, it is like it is the month or whatever of facial hair. Like, all the guys are growing out their facial hair. It's weird. But um, anyway, so Nick just has a porn stash. Mm-hmm. Straight porn stash. Too. Straight porn. Matt. Matt has the Fu Manchu. And it's bushy and big. I think you're backwards there. I'm oh, sorry. Sure yeah, sorry. Yeah. Matt has... Matt's got the porn stash. Matt's got the porn stash. Nick's got the Fu Manchu. <laughs> and it is just... It's interesting. It's big very interesting. and burly. And it, it's great. So this match had everything you wanted in it. One of the things I do want to call out, though, was Pentagon Jr. and Eddie... Where they did a was up like a Dudley a modified version uh-huh. of the Dudley Boys yeah. move on Matt or on Nick. I'm sorry, but the funny thing about that though is if you listen to uh, Busted Open, did you hear what Bubba Ray had to say I, about? I it? did. Bubba Ray took uh, exception. He took exception to Eddie Kingston coming out. You know the way he did. Like we talked last week. You know and. You know, and, and here's the thing. You know, I mean, you know, Eddie's Eddie hasn't walked back his stuff. He never. He's not a walk back kind of guy. 
but he he said he goes this is the way I feel you know I didn't feel like it was this but you know here's the thing I think that it, I think that once again bully made a made a bigger deal out of it as well because he even said the crowd there didn't pop at all but didn't pop nearly as much for it as they thought and i go i don't think this is a big deal i really don't i just you know yeah. i think it was a little poor choice of words a little bit but it didn't really it's not that big a deal but i mean he was still he, waving the flag but they took it yeah. because he called out the other channel as him i think not. it's because he was never in the other channel is why that's that's what bully was saying it's yeah, like, you, yeah know, you have no you have no right to talk because you weren't right even you, there. Have, you have no smack to talk on them you never were there they didn't they didn't do to you what they did to other people you know yeah so whatever <laughs> she doesn't even go here um <laughs> All right, so this match had lots of fun stuff in it. It did have Nick, Nick Fu Manchu, doing Macho Man all over the place, like with the hands lot. and everyone. He did it. It even a it got lot. Shivani hot too. He's, I'm <laughs> so sick of him mocking the Macho Man. You know, <laughs> it was great. great. Um, we had everything. We even had like some great heel shit, awesome heel shit. Um, I, say, I know you love this part. So the uh, the Young Bucks totally did the uh, Lucha Bros finishing move on to you, on Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah, so the, the package, oh, so the package bad. pile driver, and then um, Matt was doing that. And then Nick jumped off, and then like did the the, did the, the, the spin the and bam spike. And yeah, 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 it was total oh, great was stuff. So but but Eddie Kingston was able to make the save. Yep. Loved and the it. Good brother, yeah. And then, then the good the, brothers came out. Then that, the good brothers you know, came like, out, and then just <sighs> chaos and anarchy was, were going on. But Brandon Cutler accidentally sprays Matt in the face with the the, the spray <laughs> shit, and yep. then they're able to hit their their finisher because also Kazarian came out the elite hunter to to make an assist. Penta hits the fear factor. Eddie hits his spinning back fist. One, two, three. Your winners are Eddie Kingston and Pentagon Jr. I know. They get a title shot next week, as a matter of fact. Next week. Which we'll talk Miami about. We're going to talk Ranger. about the Miami show's card coming up here because, yes, spoiler, please. it's freaking loaded. It, 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 it definitely is. And I, yeah, I like Kazarian like stick like this, too. I do love this. Uh, you know, um, his 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 shirt's great, yes. and Jericho kept kept calling him the Punisher too, which it fits the whole shtick as well because he's he has to say crap. He comes out, he's very much a broken man. Yeah, he he's he, he Frank Frank Castle Frankie Kazarian. Yes, it's good. And, it's and really he's grown good. a beard too, by the way. He is also a part of the beard beard club. <laughs> so after this, we have Christian Cage giving yet another mom speech to Jungle Boy, which Christian Cage is growing a beard. Just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Spoiler alert, so, they're all growing beards. Okay. Yeah, like I so said, it's, it's like it's there's a facial hair thing. I don't I don't read too much into it. Just just keep <laughs> just keep going, please. All right. So then okay, so mom speech. Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are out with Tony Giovanni. Ethan Page does his getting that heat too. Ooh. Oh. So much heat. I love me some Ethan Page. In a, in a good way. In a great way. Yeah, straight heel heat, not X Pac heat. It's not X Pac. It's good. Yeah, he's just like you know, I'm good. Like when you do a coffin drop, you're gonna think of me. When you think about doing a coffin drop, you're gonna think of me. I'm like, oh my god, this is so good, because I'm the one who put you in the coffin, closed it up. <laughs> like so it's so good. good. So then, of course, here comes Sting. And he, <laughs> he he rolls out a coffin, takes a sheet off the coffin. Lo and behold, it's Darby Allen, now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that happened. That's still going. But then Ethan Page said that the coffin match is off next week. And yes. He wants it in writing that Darby Allen's not going to touch him for a whole week, and then he'll consider doing uh, the coffin match at Fighter Fest. So, yeah, whatever. I scream somebody didn't get cleared, but I don't know. I'm yes. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> when somebody didn't get cleared, it, I bet it's a Darby. Yeah. Which he's also going to be a part of the cast of Jackass 4. Did you hear that? I did not, but that makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. Sure does. Um, all right. So the next match is 
Jack Evans of the Hybrid 2 versus our favorite Jack and Jungle Boy, the man who has stolen Anna Jay's heart. He's got 99's heart. You, you dirty some bitch. I'm there so you proud go. Of him. I'm so good proud for of him. you. Good for I'm you, boy. I'm good just for happy you. for him. He makes me smile every time I think about him. Now, Plus, I love I love the responses on Twitter on Instagram from the AW roster too. Oh yeah, all of them are like yeah. Evil Uno's like, does this mean he has? Does this mean we have to sign him to? Or is like, does this mean he's signing Dark Order? Or you know, or, and then Luch- Luchasaurus came back and it's like I'm not I'm not signing with the Dark Order. You know, it's like the, it was the. Don't just look at the picture because the picture is yeah, the picture is cool and all. But read, follow down in the comments if you're going to check it out. They are hilarious. Yes, like there's some good. Sammy put one out there that was pretty funny. Yeah, oh, yeah. quite a few of them did. Uh, but anyway, good match. It was at, very athletic. Obviously, Jungle Boy wins. He also with this gets his fiftieth win in AEW. He's the first first one competitor to get to fifty wins in AEW. Again, to our point last time we talked, he is the workhorse of AEW. Yep. Right after that, uh, the HF- HFO comes out to seek revenge, but Jurassic Express and Christian Cage come out. There's some fighting. Christian Cage is uh, in the ring, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. It was some of this stuff. It was like, meh. Yeah. Meh. Okay. <laughs> M- MJF uh, begins to uh, do a promo on Jericho. It was pretty good. I It was classic, classic uh, MJF, or dare I say vintage. He was on point. And then next week, good. next week he's going to announce the stipulations for Jericho to get that, ma- that rematch that he so much wants. I hope it's not just a rehash of kind of what he did to Cody to give Cody a match. Remember? Yeah, I really, I, I want it to be a little bit more original than that, but I could see uh, him yeah. running a, well, now since he's got a faction, run the gauntlet, that'd probably be the best something, way to do something it. Something else, you know, or there's got to be there's some other thing. It'll be interesting to see. There'll be a summit next week is what was announced. So Yeah. Um, then uh, Andrade El Idolo issues the challenge to Matt, Something Seidel is going to happen next <laughs> he week. He kept calling him Matt something. And then uh, Abra- uh, Alex Abrahantes is like, oh, it's, uh, what was his name? Oh, Seidel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt something. And then, so, <laughs> good yeah. on you, Andrade. People dog you for, you know, your bad English. But I like this whole, I like your spin. He, he's taking a negative, making it a positive in this whole, like, e- arrogant shtick. Yes. So- in ring debut next week. In ring debut at the Miami show, the and I'm the sorry, Andrade and Seidel. That's gonna be flippy spinny shit. That gets JJ happy. That should be a good match. That it, should be a pretty damn good match. It should be, be a good match, yeah. So then after this, Tony Schiavone is uh, talking with one Kenny Omega, and this is probably I love the last match of the night, but this is probably the greatest moment of the show. Mm-hmm. Yes. So here comes Kenny Omega with yet another porn like thing going he's on. He's got like he's got like the Hulk Hogan from NWO. Yeah, but without but actually like not just not it's so shave like chin, just shave, shave chin. chin, shave chin. So he's just got this everything whole, like, else. Got the chops like a Fu Manchu chop, no chin. So kind of almost like Lemmy esque if you think about it. That yes, way. that's exactly what it is. It's Lemmy. He's got the Lemmy rest going. Of, rest in peace, Lemmy. Hey. Uh, Lemmy and God in the wrestling match. Who wins? Uh, that's a trick question. Lemmy is God. Yeah. Airheads was all last night. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So Kenny Omega is out there talking about, I fought everybody. I'll, I'm, I'm just going to defend other things. You'll see me on other shows. And then here comes the dark order. Mm. Okay. Here comes the dark order and they come out and evil Uno's like, you know, just talking, and then here comes, here, here, here comes Kenny. He's like, "You don't deserve a match with me. None of you have enough wins. You guys all suck and everything like that." He's like, "What am I gonna do? Fight five? God, I'll beat <laughs> yeah. him like two minutes." You know? Yeah. Then, then Evil Uno goes, "We're not talking about us." And then everybody's like, "Oh, like because we know what it means." And then, and then Kenny goes, "If if it's who I think it is." He won't like it that you're talking for him. 
And then he goes, if it's a, who I think it is, I don't think he even wants this match. Like, and they just keep going with it. Keep digging it in. He doesn't think that he deserves to be a champion, you know? Yes. So on and so forth, <coughs> digging into it. So that happened. They, Obviously, they leave it there. They leave it like at that. We leave it right there, and we're going to come back Pause. to it. Pause. We are pausing <laughs> this because we have a match in between, okay? So – Championship match of Miro versus Brian Pilmer, Brian Pillman Jr., which Miro's thing now says the Redeemer the on Redeemer. it. Really. New, <laughs> new music. New music, doing everything. The, it's great. Because, so you know, the best man was good for what it was, you know, but this is – let Miro find his own shtick and run with it because he is gold with it. And the Redeemer, God's favorite champion. God, I love this. It's yes. fantastic. So, God's favorite champion actually had a really good match with Brian Pillman Jr. Pillman it, had a good match as well. Yeah, he like Pillman. For Pillman, real. Pillman looked really, really good. It was, it and was him and Garrison. If you're watching Dark, they're getting over too. They really are hardcore. Like when he came out, people yeah. were like, "Yeah." I thought um, it was just because of his dad in the in the whole. You know, I think they're they're honest to God getting over. Yeah, so, it's, it's not just the name. It's not name recognition at all for him. I think it's legit good. him. They have a great look and a good shtick. I'm happy for them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, good match. Miro wins with his with his uh, game over super acolyte thing that he does now where he pulls him over. It looks I think he's going to rename it. He's got to rename it with the whole Redeemer shtick. Uh, he, right? um, so every place I've seen is called the game over. That's what, he gives, that's what it was. Because he's like, he goes, game, game over. over. But it was, it's it. all about the best man because he was a video game best man. You know, he was. I think. I think he personally. This is my my opinion. I think he's got to rename it with this whole Redeemer, God's favorite champion shtick. Yeah, call it something else. Yes. The Acolyte is actually a perfect name for it. But whatever. Yes. You know. I mean, whatever. Call it the, being redeemed. Um. The savior, savior, something like that. Anyway, whatever. I'll, I'll think of something great because I usually come up with something creative. You'll nail it. You'll nail it in a week or two. Okay. So we'll take the pin out of the Dark Order right now. Press okay. Play. So backstage, here comes Adam Page into the Dark Order's lair, pissed. Why would oh, you do yeah. that? Why would you do something stupid like that? And then Stu Grayson goes, if, if, you, if, you, if you know us, if you think we're going to do something stupid, why didn't you stop us? And then all of them like were like, you remember when I lost my championship match, but you raised me raised me up on your shoulders and said I did a great job, and you're so proud of me. That's what we're doing for you. And and then all of them started like giving him the one pep by talk. one. Yeah, it was. And then so Alex nice. Reynolds hit the nail on the head. He was the last one. Alex Reynolds just grabbed him by the shoulder and goes, "This is your time." It is setting in motion. What we all want at All Out what we're calling Kenny for. Omega and Adam Hangman Page. They're about five weeks-ish, five, six weeks out. So perfect timing here. They're gonna, this run for a little bit. He's going to start to come around to it. And by the time we get to you know that week or, two, that week or so before Chicago, it's going to – yeah, it's going to be on. And Oh, God, that's going to be – that might be – that that has potential if it happens, and like we we know and think it's going to happen. That is that I'm already putting that on my short list for match of the year right now. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it doesn't live up to that, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pissed. But so if and again, being the elite prophesized this with the whole drug uh-huh. trip episode with right. ten. And well, they've he, been slow building this just for for the longest time. Even longest before time. that, too, you know, every time every time Kenny Omega comes up, he slowly changes the channel. And then, but they're slowly, you know, and like I think, I think for sure, this is this is it. This has got to be like we talked about a couple months ago. You and I, this is the drip, right? This is the this is the the the, the slow burn. This is the how you get the Dark Order. Is he becomes the Dark Cowboy? Number 69, the new leader of the Dark Order. 0.08. Come on now. 
point oh eight. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I forget. I forget which number you always say. I oh, whatever. I forget. It's point oh eight. <laughs> I love. I love me. I love negative one to death. Love him to death. The ten year old kid. He's not. He's not. He's, he's not there full time. You know. No. He's I not mean, the leader, and everybody when, knows when that. Eventually, he. Is. I mean, he's the spiritual leader, and then when he becomes old enough, and he actually you know graduates high school, and yeah, sure, if they're still around, great. But until then, we gotta have an actual like on screen leader, Hangman. Yes. Let's. So Let's Let's I just I just want it to happen. I want him to get that gold. The only group inside of outside of the Bullet Club who's got numbers is the Dark Order. The only one who's got the numbers that can yep. go with with the elite is the Dark Order. Makes total sense. Yep. So after that, there was a Taz special announcement team taz basically brian cage and ricky starks are going to fight on july 14th in in austin for the ftw championship belt so this yeah, is ricky the starks way finally cleared to, again yeah so he's gonna be fully cleared ricky starks fully cleared this is gonna be the way to get brian cage out they're gonna they're, 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 they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna beat him out you know basically beat him out Get the get the belt over to Ricky and you know or Hobbs and then we're gonna, yeah yeah I'm with you there I agree I agree and I like that if that's what happens but yes so after yep. this okay so they'll probably keep this going for another two weeks but probably, anyway yeah <laughs> so after that we had a tag team match of Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero versus Britt Baker and Rebel remember Reba <laughs> and Rebel mixed together <laughs> is Rebel uh, it was an okay match. The, the it got a little botched ending because of an injury. Yeah, so, it was not. A, it, it it looked it looked really bad too. Yeah, so Rebel got hurt. Uh, she was going to make a save on um, for Britt after Britt got hit by uh, Nyla's knee off the top rope when you mm -hmm, hang off yep. the side, and when she's running in there, you saw her knee just basically bend the wrong way. And when she ran in there to make the save, and then she just laid there, and literally Nyla was gonna pick her up, and she's like, "No, no, no something popped." Like you could read her, you could read like, "I'm hurt." Yeah, she, something popped. She basically xed herself out to Nyla. She got carried. There's there's video, uh, people put on Twitter of her literally getting carried out by the referees too, and she just got back from a knee, a legitimate knee injury too. Yeah, and it might be the other knee, kind of like a Tegan <laughs> Knox scenario, which would suck. The good thing is that it doesn't affect her character too much because she doesn't wrestle a ton, and so. she's clutch with a uh, clutch with a crutch. So it kind of still there's already a shirt a made for her. So I yeah. wish her the best, though. Hopefully, it's nothing serious, but it it didn't look good. Yeah, so they had to do kind of an odd finish. Um, Britt Baker was able to get the lockjaw on Vicky Guerrero because Vicky Guerrero was uh, going to have Nyla Rose go to the top, and then Britt pushed her into the, the corner, and Nyla fell off, whatever. They were able to do that. And then after that, uh, Nyla attacked Britt, did a powerbomb, then took her out to the outside where earlier in the match, Nyla set up a, a table and powerbombed Brittany, uh, Brittany, geez, Britt Baker through said table. <laughs> It, yeah, for the only women's match of the night, for the only one real women's spa of the night, it was okay. It was whatever. Yeah. It's the, I, I I hope they're not falling into the same original traps because we had just talked for months about them finally getting traction, doing you know, you know two matches and, and I, let's go do two somethings or uh, maybe they're saving it for the road. So yeah, but this was this this was this was the dud of the night if you ask me. I agree. I agree. The, and it was not a bad match. It wasn't a great match. It was just an eh match. And I mean, mean Britt Brit had good storytelling in it. You know, she did the whole "I'm not going to take in" or you know, pushes Re Rebel towards. Uh, yeah, that was uh, great. You know, yeah. so I mean, it's okay. But Vicky Guerrero, come on, Vicky Guerrero, and eh, whatever. Um. So after that, hey, uh, J Jake Hager, Santana Ortiz cut a promo on FTR Wardlow. They have a six man tag match. Uh, coming up next week with Ooh, next week oh yeah God. With, Co with conan he's going to be there and Tully blanchard so that's really good stuff there um then at, they also announced that there will be the first ever mixed tag match yeah i so i could have swore there already was tag. one but yeah this is a full-on mixed tag uh yeah, this orange is, cassidy yep. and chris statlander against the uh, bunny and the blade should be pretty good at probably actually yeah it should be very good yeah 
And then you've got you got you got the Young Bucks defending their titles next week against uh, Penta and and Eddie. So take two of that. Yep. Um, Cody the, and, the, and uh, QT Marshall in a South Beach strap fight because we know how much you love them strap fights. I mean, strap oh, off fight. Why? Why? Anyway, um, you're gonna One have the getting pegged. Um, <laughs> MJF and uh, Jericho Summit. Yep. And then what was the other match? It was the six man tag. There was one more. Or the trios match. Uh, I don't have anything else. Because the coffin match got moved, but there was one other one. I could swear there was another match. Anyway, there probably will be. Cards looking pretty loaded. Cards looking stacked. Oh, Andrade. That's the Andrade. Andrade Yes. I was like, I know there's another match. Yeah, Andrade and Seidel. And there'll probably be one more match, too. That's a, that's a lot of stuff going on, too. Yeah. So. so now we are at main event time of the first time ever meeting in an AEW ring, MJF and Sammy Guevara. Doesn't seem like it's the first time. You're like, is that right? But yeah, that's right. <laughs> first time in singles competition. These two have went head-to-head in an AEW ring. Oh, It was great. This match. This it match, was a four-star match. Um, yeah. I would not five. No, I'd, not. Give it, I would, I'd give it. I'd, I personally give it a straight four. Is what I was going to. Yeah, say. even four. Like not any more, not any less. Mm-hmm. Lots of outside stuff. Sammy looked absolutely great. Sammy hit a six three zero when MJF was begging not to get hit. Uh, I love that part. MJF, the, look, there's a Spanish fly. A Spanish god a fly. Which, uh, a Spanish god fly. Yeah. Which Jericho was on commentary all night. He called it a Spanish god fly. So yes. You know, springboard into a Canadian destroyer or a Cuban destroyer. A as Cuban Jericho destroyer. Said. He can't speak a lick of English Spanish, but he's got the Latin <laughs> the blood flowing through him. Like, oh my God. So good. And then at one point in time, he MJF got thrown over the rail into the, the crowd. And then Sammy climbed up to the top rope and then did a a full just a, just a full single dive over in through uh, it was like 20 feet away it was nuts it's like my yeah. god it's so far it, yeah but jericho also great. had his, i mean not jericho mjf also had his offense he, he had, hit a second rope tombstone pile driver from the second rope uh, yeah i thought uh, like, he killed no him. way no way he's gonna holy shit he did that <laughs> and then of course he was selling his knee was hurt the whole time And then at that point, Wardlow comes out, starts attacking um, Jericho, throws Jericho off of the the ledge down, and Jericho's hurt. And then here comes Sean Spears out of nowhere, smacks Sammy Guevara on top of the head. He's out cold. MJF barely has anything, just lays his arm over him. One, two, three. Your winner is MJF in the most heel way ever and i am here for it because that's what heels do this is uh, this is the future and and for all those who give aw a hard time about oh a or wwe's rejects oh they're just pushing all these guys of yes christian cage is there yes matt hardy is there yes there there's paul white and there's mark henry on the commentary on different things yeah what what were the biggest moments of tonight well you had pentagon and eddie kingston versus the young bucks to open the freaking show Okay, hello. None of them have been in, in WWE. You had Jungle Boy is, is you know, match number, win number 50, right? The most wins of anybody ever in AEW. Freaking Jungle Boy, of all things. Uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page are, 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 is, your, is your long running. That's your, that's your big, big feud they're setting up. Neither have been in WWE. You end the night with... You know the other the other two of the three that we always talk about being the future MJF and Sammy Guevara. We're going to see this match over the next decade in in just you know all time classics. And once oh, again, yeah. so that that's who they're really pushing. So everybody gives AEW that hard time, and it's all like, oh, you just you know WWE's rejects. You just want to be W. I be- yeah. here's your counterpoint. Here's your evidence. Yeah, I beg to differ. <laughs> Sammy Guerrero was in the first ever AEW match. Did you know that? Yes, I sure did. Yeah. So I mean, it, it is what it is. But this was this had this had so much that I that's, wanted. That's when he when he had a wolf on his head. Yeah, that was that was because it, it was it was that uh, at the end of the night, the, on the first circle night of might, the first circle form. I believe it, yes, it was the end of the night, and he came out. Yes, but he had the first match match of the of this show. Yeah, against so, Cody. 
Oh, yeah, it was against Cody, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Luckily for you, I got a pornographic memory. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So after they did that, they, there was a great little video package too, which you gotta go go well, go on YouTube, go on go on on Twitter, Instagram, watch the AW. They did a little they did a little like video package of their time in uh, Daly's place, right? Fifteen months, and it's such good. It was like three and a half minutes, but it was such a great little video, and it has all the emotions of everything coming through there. When you think about it. There was like there was a lot that happened at Daly's place. Like we don't, I think we we put it forgot you for granted because time's gone so fast this past year and a half, right? Mm-hmm. A lot happened. You had the longest reign start and end of titles during that period. So many debuts, um, you know, tragic things that happened, uh, unbelievable matches, a lot of unbelievable matches. Uh, both cinematically and just wrestling wise, you know. So mm-hmm. here's what I wanted to end with tonight. Okay. Uh, um, instead of instead of Jr. doing doing a minor botch and you know calling it WWE Dynamite right before the show signs off, which he did, and immediately people jumped on him, and immediately he's just like, "Well, sorry, fucked up." I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be fired though, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I love. <clears throat> um, I want to ask you, Jamie. What were your? Give me a couple of your favorite things from this past 15 months. Matches, things that happened. Um, you know, I'll let you think about it for a second. Because of course, I'm going to start off with the exalted one himself. This is not going to stay up here, but the exalted one himself, <laughs> Mr. Brody Lee, making his debut. His entirety, his entirety of his run and the end of his life, unfortunately, was during the pandemic. Yep. But it, it was, it took the Dark Order, which we, of course, rocking, took the Dark Order from a group to a an honest to God thing, a hit. I mean, it really gave them the purpose. It really did. And, you know, his, his impact is felt forever. Shit, JR's catchphrase for opening the show is because of him now. And yeah. every, everything. I think everybody's better. I think, I think it's one of those things that happened at a time when the company was young enough and all the stuff was going on here that it just was, you know, something that combined them together for good for the long haul. So, anyway, that was, that was my first thing i wanted to say was of course john huber the exalted one brody Brody lee Lee. coming over yeah brody lee's number one if i had to say like a number two there's no limit so just do do whatever yeah yeah yeah. um number two for me who um that is really really the the stadium stampede a lot say stampedes (laughs) yeah plural the first one and the second one where they had fans first one was was so unbelievable the first one was amazing i there's just so much uh i mean thunder rosa hikaru shida hikaru shida's title reign during basically the entire pandemic took uh-huh. the women's division on her back you know and while Britt baker was hurt and Britt baker developed into the star she is during mm. the pandemic is just amazing in itself yep uh, whew. uh, I mean, you had, you had so many debuts, you know, you had Lance Archer, Miro. Well, I think Archer might actually debuted right before the pandemic started. Yeah, but, he, he debuted um, right before, but Brian Cage didn't. You had Brian Cage, uh, you had Matt Seidel, FTR, mm-hmm. Matt Hardy. Um, Matt Hardy was another one who came in as Broken Matt. You had, of yeah. course, Brody Lee. Um, you had Sting, you had Paul White, you had. Christian Cage. You had, I mean, you had so many debuts, all these guys coming in, you know, giving new lifeblood to TNA, either from WWE, from Impact, from elsewhere. Um, so many good things. And Jer- some of the match. Jericho's Not My Champion was absolutely excellent. Or not Jericho, MJF, the Not My Champion. The Not My Champion thing was great. Yep. Dinner Debonair, too, was fantastic. Dinner Debonair. Um, God, they had so many great memories. But there, I mean, with some of the matches, though, how about the Proud and Powerful versus Best Friends street fight out in the parking lot? Oh, my God, yes. Or That match, I didn't think it was going to be good at all. And it, it, by far, like, for weeks, I'm like, this fucking match, this fucking, it was so yeah. good. 
And and then when, when was it? Like about six months ago, Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros opened up the show. Yeah. It's like Jesus. Like it was just insane. Like and Phoenix the, versus Penta. Phoenix versus Penta where oh, there's someone like they're they they're the ripping mass off, off of each other. Oh, oh my Jesus. God. Yeah. So much good shit. Seeing the Bucks turn complete super heel during uh-huh. that whole thing, which I really like. I like super heel Bucks a lot because they just don't give a shit. Um, I mean, God. the ending could be what it was, but we had the exploding uh, barbed wire death match. <laughs> With the <laughs> botch that, ending, yeah. Up until the botch, it was fantastic. I mean, shit. <laughs> Nick even bought a shirt. Young boy bought a shirt like during the program because he was so amped about that match. <laughs> Yeah, that that match Steffi left wanting. Uh, I did. You know, but God, they had so many other good things. Uh, Moxley, Kingston's little feud. We got to see War Horse on AEW. Yep. Uh, th- we got to see Matt Cardona on AEW. I mean, Eddie Kingston was one of those guys, and they ended up getting signed by him. They took a chance I, on Eddie Kingston. And I think that one of the offshoots, and one of the things that gets overlooked a little bit too, is... Especially now with the way the tournament is going, we've already talked that they're going to be changing the format a little bit about dark and dark elevation, right? Mm-hmm. So dark elevation, they're going to be shooting kind of along with you know um, um, a rampage. So you'll have a little bit. But it's not, you're not going to have the the five hours of wrestling that's going to be available Monday and Tuesday basically anymore. But because of that, you got to have people who had like full storylines and runs and continuous work. Tay Conti's one of them, you yeah. know. Um, a lot of members from the Dark Order. Uh, some people that you know are still kind of developing, but are making that next step up. Ky- Kylan King is is a good example of that. Uh, the the Varsity the, Blondes. The varsity Blondes. Thank you. I was going to say Young Bucks, but that's not right. The Varsity Blondes is a product of that. That you know, not having a dedicated facility in a separate you know like nxt to develop your talent in this is their way to do it and i think it i think that that's actually been a positive that they can do like two days a week they do shootings all day long of all these matches and yeah there's 85 matches a week on the internet for a dark but you're getting this young talent and so you're making this pool of people who you're comfortable working with that's ready to be there so when you have somebody who like like a tesha price or or like you know um um uh, um, um, SD Sean Drew or whatever you know when, John Dale when we have them that they're, maybe they're yeah yeah when they're a little bit more you know ready to come to D on you know like you know live TV show you that you already been working with them so that I think is an overlooked part of this is that I know what number two is what's your number two I cannot believe I forgot about this yeah Maki fucking Ito we got Maki. Goddamn Ito. Maki Ito! Who Ito is Chan. the cutest in the world? It's Ito Chan. Yes, we got Maki Ito. So, anyway, there's, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I'm not going to lie. I got a couple little tears in the middle of that, mostly because of, you know, Brody Lee. But you yeah. know, I got a couple little tears in that because, I mean, there, you look back and you think, oh, it's been terrible. There's been no fans. And it's like, they have done, and for what it's worth, WWE as well, as much crap as we give them, you know, they have continued to do shows. NXT continue to do shows. Impacts continue to do shows. You know, they continue to put wrestling out there for us in the middle of, you know, the worst pandemic of our lives, right? So there's been a lot of good stuff with AEW. So that's what I got. Good. I tell you what, uh, you guys let us know what from this past year AEW wise, uh, should be fifteen months <laughs> uh, for the time at Daly's place. What from this past year really got you? Was it uh, that opening night where Cody came out and gave that speech and him and oh, him and him and, Ome- so him and Omega and Matt Jackson are just like you know f- this is what we do. F it, you know. And that that night was one of their best nights. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it had so much more emotion that night. Everybody that wrestled was there for a purpose, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, what was it that was it? Brody Lee was it? You know, FTR was it the the unsanctioned match between Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, or any of the bangers that the Bucks or Phoenix or Pentagon did, or Kenny Omega? 
Let us know. Tell us in the comments. Give us a tweet at Total Spot Fest. Let us know what you guys' uh, favorite highlights were from this past uh, year and a half almost of AW uh, Daily's Place. So, all right. We, we're done. We're not going to keep rambling. We're going to go. So, uh, quick reminder. Once again, we'll have the down in the, in the, uh, in the, the comments or the, uh, description down below. We'll have the link to last video, episode 43. Once again, if you want to get a journey pro with us for free, you can get in and get some tickets. You got till the 11th to sign up, leave a comment, like the video down below and subscribe to our channel, but I'll, I'll put all the information down in the description box there. Just follow that. We will announce that on our show on the 13th. 13th. So, and the show is on the 30th, so plenty of time. And if we need to come back, if something happens, we got plenty of time to do that. But that's what we got. We'll be back on Tuesday with our regularly scheduled programming. We're going to talk about impact that's happening up here, as well as any other news or goings on. And then we'll be back with you next Thursday to talk more AEW. Awesome. So, yep, that's all I got. All right, Easy. Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have nothing, nothing else witty to say, so... That's all we got. Thank you guys for listening. We do appreciate it. Jamie, why don't you take us home? All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not down with Total Spot Fest, I got four words for you. Join the Dark Order. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.